It was supposed to be a great night for Colorado Republicans. It is turning into a landslide night for Colorado Democrats. We are currently witnessing an epic collapse of support for Republicans in Colorado, with Democrats recording blowout wins, even in this year that was supposed to be so favorable for the GOP. Democratic Governor Jared Polis is headed for the widest win in a Colorado governor's race in 20 years. He's beating Republican Heidi Ganahl by more than 18 points. Democratic Senator Michael Bennett will continue to represent Colorado in the U.S. Senate. Republican Joe O'Day has conceded behind by about 15 points. A race that is too close to call could provide the largest upset of the night. Nationwide conservative star Congresswoman Lauren Boebert currently trails her Democratic challenger Adam Frisch in the 3rd Congressional District representing the Western Slope and Southern Colorado. We have reporters across the state covering all the big races for us tonight. We'll head to the watch parties and hear from the candidates in just a moment. Let's first talk about what's happening in Lauren Boebert's district, because if she were to lose tonight, that would become a national headline because of the national profile that she has built for herself. She's done it traveling around the country, becoming a Republican star. And the question is, are people unhappy at home? Apparently, you need to pass legislation to be still liked by your electorate. We thought this was going to be a big night for Boebert only because when the district was redrawn because of redistricting, it went plus seven more for Republicans. Oh, wow. So this is what the district looks like now. These are the counties that make up the third congressional district. Your population centers are Mesa County and Pueblo County. Mesa County, where Grand Junction is. Let's see what the vote is currently. And of course, this, this is the Secretary of State site that refreshes in real time. There we go. And the vote total here is in favor of Lauren Boebert by about 6,000, 31,000 to 25,000. So that's where she needs more votes to come for her. Pueblo is moving in favor of Frisch. And this is a county that has swung both ways where Republicans tend to get the benefit of the doubt in the last, I don't know, 10 years, which is why it's been represented by a Republican. Uh, here, Adam Frisch has the advantage by 6,000 votes. So those are the two counties as more votes come in that will tell us whether or not which way this is gonna go. If more Boebert votes come in in Mesa County like we had expected, that's gonna be in her advantage. And if she doesn't make up the gap in Pueblo County, that's gonna be an advantage for Adam Frisch. But yeah, this is a third congressional district that I think everybody thought was gonna go Boebert just because of the way the district was redrawn. This is the current state in the race for governor, Jared Polis, with an astonishing 18-point lead over Heidi Ganahl. This is a lead as large or slightly larger than any polling that existed in this race at any point. He was certainly favored, but not by this kind of margin, Marshall. Oh, gosh, no. And, and that's, I mean, between the governor, Senate, as Secretary of State, Attorney General, you're seeing the, the margin of victory wide and then narrow, but it's still not even within a double, a less than double digits. I think the uh, uh, treasurer's race is the closest, and that's 11 points. This is one of the congressional district races. Beside, so CD3 is close. We told you about that. CD7, Congressional District 7, where Ed Perlmutter is uh, resigning stepping down from Congress. It's an open seat and Brittany Pedersen is ahead by 52,000 votes in a newly drawn 7th Congressional District. For Ed Perlmutter, it was more metro area, Jefferson County uh, and, and more into the metro area. Now Jefferson County is still in it, but then it bleeds into the foothills and the mountains and it's a 17 point, 18 point advantage for Brittany Pedersen. CD8 is the other close congressional district. This is the brand new district that Colorado got because we grew so much in the last 10 years. This one is getting closer. It started last, uh, I saw an hour and a half ago, it was three points for the advantage of Yudera Caraveo. It is now 2.3% difference. 3,700 votes separate the two in Weld County, Adams County, and a sliver of Larimer County. But this is, this is going to be the, the talking point here. Uh, libertarian candidate Richard Ward getting 4% of the vote, 6,400 votes almost. And the difference between the top two 37, 3,800, and it's, again, narrowing. But when you bring in this third-party candidate into the equation, that's going to be the talk about the, we already knew it was going to be a close race in CD8, and then you have this third-party candidate that perhaps maybe made it sway one way or the other that it wouldn't have if it was just the top two candidates going against each other. Tonight, we've proven once again what a special place Colorado is, a place where we truly value decency and hard work where we fight for our freedoms. 
Democratic Governor Jared Polis with the first victory speech of the night after his blowout win over Republican Heidi Ganahl. Our colleague Alex Lewis was there, had the opportunity to speak to the governor afterwards, and, and he certainly feels vindicated after weathering a lot of criticism through the pandemic and afterwards to come out on top with such a convincing win. 100% and Kyle, you hit the nail on the head. That is what he talked a lot about during his victory speech is the idea that people trusted him through the pandemic, that it was not an easy thing to make decision after decision to keep Coloradans safe and that people of this state trust him to take us into the next level of what comes next. And when you talk about what comes next, you have to talk about what we're dealing with now, which is inflation, which is the homelessness crisis, which is people who grew up in this great state and call Colorado home who can no longer afford to live here. And that's what he has of top of mind as he gets into his second term. This is what he had to say. We've been through some tough times. The three largest wildfires in the history of our state, the most destructive fire 10 months ago, global pandemic, global economic uncertainty. Uh, but through it all, I did my best to look at data, make informed decisions every day, pragmatic approach. Uh, and I'm looking forward to, to bringing that same uh, background and focus uh, to make Colorado an even more amazing place over the next four years. So essentially more of the same is what he is promising, and that's what voters by a wide margin say that they believe in, that he's going to bring to the state as we move forward. Uh, the party is still rocking here at the Art Hotel. Two of three bars are fresh out of booze, so that just shows you how much celebrating has been happening here. Uh, Jared Pohl is very excited by this huge win as we go into his next term. Okay, we'll talk about the booze amendments later. Yeah. <laughs> when you talk about booze, everybody Thanks, got Alex. to say on everybody got <laughs> to say right. on that. Polis' Republican challenger Heidi Ganahl, even if you talk to Republicans privately, they will say that she put on a clinic on how to lose an election in Colorado in a year when they wanted to talk about inflation and crime and government spending. She was wandering off talking about the conspiracy theory of the day from big tech censorship to election integrity to kids identifying as cats and courting the far right base of the party. And it, it blew up big time. And she was the top of the ballot. And, mm -hmm. and perhaps that had an impact as well. A lot to consider for the Republican Party. She did concede. She was emotional. She gave a speech about an hour ago. And our Mark Salinger was there and caught up with uh, Heidi Ganahl a little bit after that. Mark. Yeah, Kyle and Kim, the party here at Denal uh, headquarters in Sedalia is very much over. Not at, at all like uh, Alex was showing us with the Democrats just moments ago. Now, Heidi Denal got on stage and gave a tearful concession speech about an hour or so ago saying, quote, I'm sorry that we couldn't pull this off tonight. Now, this was a full on concession speech as she's down double digit points and the votes are still being tallied. Now, Danny Moore, her running mate for lieutenant governor and someone who did not has previously questioned the 2020 election results as an election denier. Now I caught up with him just after their speech and he says that tonight he accepts the results and has always had faith in the Colorado election system. Ganahl for her part thanked supporters and told them she's not going anywhere. Tonight didn't go the way we had hoped for or prayed for, but that doesn't mean we give up. This I know, this movement is real. Ganahl, for her part, also thanked uh, supporters and asked Governor Jared Polis to not forget about the people who voted for her during his next term as governor. Now, it's important to note that Heidi Ganahl did give media interviews after this. We tried to ask her questions, Kyle, like you were saying, about what her final message as her closing message was in the last couple of weeks in the campaign. Her campaign team told us that Nine News was not allowed to ask questions, and when I tried to ask a question to the candidate, her security security team stepped in front of me and her campaign team started yelling over my questions. It, it was striking tonight, Ganahl in her concession speech specifically thanked conservative talk radio for getting out her message when she said the mainstream media would not. Uh, Ganahl, from the start of her campaign to the end, was unwilling to do an in-depth interview here and declined to debate Democratic Governor Jared Polis here. Marshall Salinger, thank you very much. If Democratic Senator Michael Bennett finishes the six-year term he was re-elected to tonight, Bennett will become the longest serving senator in Colorado history. He told our Alex Lewis that tonight's blue wave in Colorado, in his view, is a rejection of former President Donald Trump. 
I think that Colorado has seen that you don't have to settle for the chaos of Donald Trump. There are a lot of Democrats and Republicans that I've met throughout the years who thought that was the best we could ever hope for. And now over the last 18 months, you've seen the most significant bipartisan infra in infrastructure bill that's been passed since Eisenhower was president, bipartisan postal reform bill that's so important to rural Colorado, a bipartisan gun bill, the first in a generation. Interesting. Um, Bennett's opponent was Joe O'Day. A lot of hopes on him because he was untested. Also someone that former President Trump didn't want anything to do with because he rejected him. Um, Steve Steger is joining us from GOP party tonight. As we've mentioned, not much of a party anymore. But you heard Joe O'Day give his concession. He was gracious in defeat, but, but talked a little bit about his vision for the entire state. Yeah, I mean, he was very graceful. He was very graceful in the way he conceded, Kim. But as you can tell, the mood here at GOP headquarters—we won't call it a party because it really wasn't a party all night long. Uh, here now, the floor basically vacant. The band, Carlos Washington's Steel Horse Swing, they just wrapped up. They told me they're used to playing to more people, uh, and there really weren't anyone out there on the floor uh, to dance along. There was a large crowd when Joe O'Day did give his concession speech, conceding very gracefully uh, to Michael Bennett, one of the first uh, words of concession that this crowd got. Uh, and then he took the stage shortly after Michael Bennett did. Here's what he had to say. And I want to congratulate Senator Bennett on his victory. I hope he'll lead into his commitments that he made during the campaign and work to move the nation forward out of this terrible rut, partisanship, and gridlock. It's interesting to hear the Republican Party talk about this race, uh, that many of the statewide offices lost by double digits. Uh, a lot of them say that they feel that they influenced policy decisions, like Attorney General candidate John Kellner says that talking about fentanyl, talking about auto theft, got policy moved at the state legislature, but that's the only victory they're able to claim tonight. I should mention, we still have not seen or heard from uh, Republican uh, congressional candidate Barb Kirkmeyer, who's in that very tight race in the 8th Congressional District. We're going to stick around and see if she's around here tonight. But all in all, a very somber mood here at Republican headquarters in Greenwood Village. I'm trying to think back to recent Colorado election history when a party went in with one expectation and walked out the door with such a different result than what we saw for Colorado Republicans tonight. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting as to who they were talking to. I think they're, they're, they're trying to dance down an interesting middle here in Colorado, realizing um, where we're going and where we've been. Yeah, our thanks to Steve Steger at Republican headquarters. Uh, I mean, truly, the ground has shifted beneath the Colorado Republican Party. And if there was any doubt about it, tonight's results in this kind of year show just what they are up against because their more moderate candidates got walloped. Yeah. Their more Trumpian candidates got walloped even more in a year that was supposed to be favorable. Yeah, it's like they're going to find themselves after this. Uh, uh, we're going to take a look at some of the other big statewide races tonight. Democratic Secretary of State General Griswold is expected to hang on to her big large win over Republican Pam Anderson. Same for Democratic Attorney General Phil Weiser, projected to win over Republican DA John Kellner.